So hello and welcome back. So just as a review of the topics covered in our advanced mobile robotics course with a focus on probabilistic robotics, the topics include localization, path planning, mapping, SLAM, kinematics, and sensors. Today we will have lecture 7-1A on common and extended common filters. So first let's have a summary of some of our learning objectives. And remember, we're right in the middle of our localization series. So we're looking at ways to use all of these different techniques to do mobile robot localization. So before we talk about the objectives, let's take a summary of some of the things we've already discussed. Remember, localization is a problem of estimating a robot's pose relative to a known map of the environment. And the hardness of the localization problem is a function of the degree to which the environment changes over time. So passive localization is based upon filters that process the data acquired by the robot in order to localize, although the localization algorithm does not control the robot. Markov localization is a different type of Bayes filter that's applied to the mobile robot localization problem. So far, we've seen Monte Carlo localization and discrete and particle filters for localization. So a common filter is parametric and works on a continuous state space system instead of unlike discrete or particle filters which we've already studied. They assume that you have a linear problem so it can be solved using recursion and matrices. The extended common filter location is primarily applied to a feature-based map where the maximum likelihood technique is used to deal with the correspondence problem and this is called survival of the fittest, as we've seen already, where this approach assumes at each point in time, the most likely correspondence is correct. And we also can do multi-hypothesis tracking, which pursues multiple correct correspondences using a Gaussian mixture to represent the posterior. As most of the lectures in this series, these come from a text called Probabilistic Robotics that was written by Sebastian Thrun, Dieter Fox, and Wolfram Burgard. To learn more about their work, you can check out the website probabilisticrobotics.org. So once again, localization uses sensory information to locate the robot in its environment. It is the most fundamental problem for providing a mobile robot with autonomous capabilities because if a mobile robot drives around long enough with odometry error and sensor error and motor issues, it's going to get lost. So having a way for it to re allocate or determine where it is in the world is very important. So you're given a map of the environment and a sequence of sensor measurements. Then what you want to do is to estimate the robot's position typically done as the robot moves by using something like position tracking, global localization, or even to solve the kidnap problem robot problem, which is where the robot has to recover from being teleported to a different location. Can you figure out where it has landed? So in Markov localization, it's a straightforward application of the Bayes filter. It requires a map as an input for some measurement model and often but not always also incorporates the motion model. So here we have a robot, and once the robot detects a door, there are three possible locations of the robot, all having equal probability. And then it transformed this into a probabilistic belief at time t minus one into a belief at time t. When you inform that location with the sensor model and with the motion model as the robot moves, and as the robot moves, you see that the probability moves, but there's a little bit of error with the smoothing out until it detects the next door. And then you multiply those probabilities with the normalization of the sensor and the motion model. And you can see that its belief will start to converge on that second door. And then once again, as the robot starts moving again, you now have a higher probability that it's moving between door two and door three. This addresses the global localization problem, the position tracking problem, and the kidnapped robot problem in a static environment, which can all be done with Markov localization. So recall that our Bayes filter and model was made of the motion model, which is the integral over all possible states, the probability of a state given the input as well as the previous state times the belief of being in that previous state 
times the normalization constant times the probability of having a certain sensor given a state, which is called our perception model. And the combination of those two together um, creates our posterior belief for where the robot is in the world. So we call this prediction and correction, where the prediction is then based upon the motion model and the robot's previous state. And then we correct that prediction based upon our sensor data and our normalization constant. So in order for us to model this, we use Gaussian or normal distributions. So we assume that our posterior belief can be represented by our Gaussian distribution. So for a univariate um, system, as shown here, we've seen before that you would have the mean mu and the standard deviation sigma, and then you would have that equation, the probability of one over the square root of two pi sigma, e to the negative one half x minus mu squared over sigma squared to represent the posterior belief that I am at a certain location in the world. Then at the bottom, you could have the multivariate options, which we won't explore much in this lecture, but this means that you now have multiple variables. Variables, So this could represent multiple possible locations of the robot in the world, where you then give its inputs, whether that is the sensor data, the motion model, or whatever. And then here are the possible locations it could be in the world, where you still would now have a mean, and you could have this now represented in terms of matrices, where you may have a covariance matrix, and that's what these shapes of the models here would represent is the possible locations. So the properties of the Gaussian for our posterior belief are that given a random variable X that is normally distributed, you can find a random variable Y that is now a linear combination of X, and then Y will also end up having a Gaussian distribution, but with a new mean and standard deviation. This is the foundation for how we do our common filter for localization, where we have X here that is normally distributed, Y equals AX plus B, which is our linear combination. And that now yields Y as a normal distribution where the mean is A mu plus B and the standard deviation is A squared sigma squared. And then similarly, you would have something similar for multivariate Gaussian distribution where you now have multiple random variables and you multiply those probabilities together. But once again, the result is still going to be a Gaussian or normal distribution. So for the discrete common filter, we estimate the state X of a discrete time controlled process that is governed by the linear stochastic difference equation, XT equals AT XT minus one plus BTUT plus epsilon T, where the matrix A is now the translation of the previous states to the current state of X. And this may be things not based upon an input necessarily, but maybe things about the environment that dictate how it transitions from one state to the next. Plus B times U, where now the B matrix represents the translation of an input, like the motion model, from given a certain motion, what's the robot's next state? And then epsilon T would represent modeling the error. And the measurements, Z would then be equal to C times X, which means given a certain state, what sensor data should you expect? Plus, once again, delta would then be the error in this model. Note that although this is called a discrete common filter, it is actually discrete in the time steps we're using to localize, but the state space is actually continuous. So the components of the common filter, filter based upon the model we just looked at is that the A matrix describes how the state evolves from T to T minus one without controls or noise. The B matrix is N by one and describes how the control input changes the state from T to T minus one. That would be our motion model. The C matrix describes how to map the state X to an observation Z. So that's our perception model. And then finally, Delta and epsilon represent these random variables in the process that would represent measurement noise or motion noise or motor noise or whatever. They're assumed to be independent and normally distributed with some covariance R and Q respectively. Common filters updating in a 1D measurement model. So here we have a prediction of where the robot is represented by the red line and then the measurement 
represented here, which would give us our correction. So the mean is weighted is a weight is a weighted mean of the previous mean. So the mean for this new uh, measurement here is a weighted mean of those that came before. So if you notice here, this blue line now, that mean in the center of it should be the weighted mean of the mean from the prediction and the measurement to create the correction. The other thing you should notice is that the blue line is closer to the green line because the variance was smaller for the green line. And also notice that the blue line should be more narrow than the other two because the variance has now decreased because hopefully in the correction, you're becoming closer to the posterior belief of where the robot is. So this is how we get to the common correction is we use our belief. We have our previous mean plus the constant K times the sensor minus the previous mean. And our sigma value for the correction is now one minus K times the previous standard deviation squared. So we find K by using the previous standard deviation squared divided by the sigma squared at that time plus the sigma squared at that time for the observation. So from these, we are now able to find the Gaussian distribution for our correction as shown here with the blue line. So now considering that was the sensor model, what about the motion model? So for the motion model, we now have the state prediction step. So what you now see is this is this magenta line that has now moved. So as the robot moves, this variance will also move and become bigger, which represents now the uncertainty in the movement. And then it also means the whole prediction will shift because the robot is in motion. And so now our new prediction for this state, our belief XT is now mu T, which is A times the previous mean plus B times the current U. And sigma squared is now A squared times sigma squared before plus sigma squared of the action of moving squared. So now we have our common filters updates, which once again, I now have a prediction. I move to my new location. I now take my new measurement as shown down here in the teal. And then based upon that, I now have this yellow line that represents my new correction. And the robot would just keep iterating over this until in theory it localizes at its new position. So the last thing we have to think about is how do you initialize your belief system when you first start? And as we've already said, we assume that everything has to be Gaussian. So the initialization also has to be normally distribu distributed. So the very first belief when the robot starts needs to have a Gaussian distribution based upon the current state and the current mean and the current standard deviation, which we call X naught, mu naught, and capital sigma naught. So here's our common filter algorithm where our inputs are mu and sigma, as well as the motion model U and the sensor Z. And then first we do a prediction and we do a, pre a prediction based upon the motion model A T U T minus one plus B U T and A two sigma T minus one A T T plus R T. And then, and notice that the prediction and correction can be decoupled, which means I could move several times and then do a sensor reading, or I could sit still, do several sensor readings and then move. So then we have our correction step, which is KT is sigma T CT, CT times sigma T CT plus QT inverse. So that's where we find the K first. And then we use that to find mu and sigma for our new prediction of where the robot is. And we would continue to do this as we move through the model. And from there, we return our mu and sigma for our new predicted and corrected step. So in summary, only two parameters describe the belief about the state of a system when you use common filters for localization. And that's based upon the Gaussian distribution. And that is one of the benefits. It is highly efficient where you have a polynomial in measurement dimensionality K and state dimensionality, and it's optimal for linear Gaussian systems, 
And notice that this is a linear type model we can use so that we can use matrices in order to calculate things that we need in the localization. But unfortunately, most robots are nonlinear. So in order to use this, we sometimes have to model these unimodal beliefs that are nonlinear with special versions of the matrices, which means you have to linearize the system. And this concludes our first lecture on common filters. And I hope you will come back for the next one, which is on extended common filters. Have a robot day.